it's OpenAI Dev Day, where you can see multiple exciting features released by OpenAI. Among that first is real-time API to make real-time conversation. Next is you are able to fine-tune images with this API. Third is prompt caching using this API, which means you're going to spend less by using this option. Next, you have model distillation. And this also decreases the cost involved in using the model. But how all these things work? And what are the key features involved in this? That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. First, we are going to see about real-time API. Developers can now build fast speech-to-speech -speech experiences into their applications, which means up until now, we were chatting with chatbot on our website. But what if you have a call button on the website where you can call and talk to an agent that is AI agent and the AI agent is going to perform task and respond to you more accurately rather than you typing any text. That is going to revolutionize the way we communicate. Today, we are introducing a public beta of real-time API. It's a low latency multimodal experience, supports natural speech to speech conversation using six preset voices. You can integrate this in your application, on your website, any language apps, educational software, or even customer support experiences. This could even replace many of the customer support employees because this API is literally going to do that. Going to answer any questions or doubts automatically based on the user's question. You can also integrate this with your own database, own application, have a custom trigger. You are able to book appointments. You can read your calendar, modify events in your calendar and much more by just having a conversation with this API. Previously, we used Whisper model to convert audio to text and then we get the response from the large language model. Then again, we use text to speech model to convert it back to audio. But this API simplifies those process and it adds the function calling ability. That is a key thing because that's how you're going to integrate this API with your own application, own database, own website data, powering customer support agents, language learning assistants, and more. And here you got some examples. Hello, Ria. Hey, Abhijit. How's it going? Going well. I'm here with Tushar, figuring out what to do for lunch. Khani me kya khai? All right, Abhijit. Here are some delicious and nutritious recommendations for lunch. Ria, ek baat kar yaar. Dekh, abhi ek bajne wala hai aur hum log yahi pe nikalne wale hain mission bay ke aas pas. To kuch aur ideas bata na. Bilkul, Abhijit. Since you're in Mission Bay, how about exploring some local options? Similarly, you are able to integrate this with any of your application. And as you can see here, they use function calling to call their custom database to retrieve this information. Similarly, you are able to integrate this with your own custom database or API. Uh, ¿Dónde está el baño? The word baño is pronounced ba-nyo with a soft ñ sound like in the English word canyon. Can you try saying that again? ¿Dónde está el baño? Perfecto. This is even really a cool example where they have integrated this real-time API into a language learning application, which means they also use function calling to get relevant information, that is language data. So the model name is GPT-40 real-time preview, and in the future, we are going to get GPT-40 audio preview. Using audio preview, developers can input text or audio into GPT-40 and receive responses in text, audio, or both. So here we are getting information only as an audio format that is streaming, but with audio preview, you get text, audio, or both. So what's next? Multimodality, which means it's going to include vision and video over time. This is going to be super useful, which means rather than voice, you are able to turn on your video and have a conversation with that agent, and it's going to respond accurately. That is going to be exciting. It's same like customer agent sitting in front of you and responding to your queries. And next, it's going to increase rate limit. We've got official SDK support that is OpenAI, Python SDK and Node.js SDK. We've got prompt caching included with that and expanded model support. So in regards to pricing for the real-time preview model is $5 for 1 million tokens, that is input tokens, and $20 or 1 million output tokens. 
For audio, it's $100 for 1 million input tokens and $200 for 1 million output tokens. So to put this in context, this equates to approximately 0 0.06 per minute of audio input and 0.24 per minute for audio output. Next, Vision Fine Tuning API. So this GPT-40 model is a multi-modal model, which means you are able to input text and image and ask a question based on that image. But the base GPT-40 vision model is not that accurate. As you can see here, the model was incorrectly tagged by GPT-40 base model. But when you feed an image and tell the model, okay, this is the sign symbol, and this is how you need to identify the item, then you can see in this example, the speed limit sign tagged successfully by a vision fine-tuned GPT-40 model. So by fine-tuning a model with images, it's going to identify objects more accurately. So here's another example where it's able to identify website elements. So this was fine-tuned with website screenshots. Similarly, here is another example where the ultimate goal is to generate this section of the website. So we have already a design here. So without fine-tuning, it's going to randomly generate without matching much. But when you fine-tune this website design or style to the vision model, then you can see the design which it generates, it's more relevant to the other part of the website. So what about the pricing? So it's going to be free up to 1 million training tokens up until October 31st. Then after that, it's going to be $25 per 1 million tokens. The inference cost is 375 USD for 1 million tokens and 15 USD for 1 million output tokens. So this is how you fine tune using Vision API. So in the dashboard, you can sign up at platform.openai.com. Then after that, go to fine tuning section and then create. We are going to select a model that is GPT-40. Then I'm going to upload JSONL data. So this is how the JSONL data will look like. So if I take one line, it's going to look like this with the system prompt, the user, the user image. So I'm providing the image. That is the image of a cheese. Then going to teach the model that this image is Dan Berg. So if someone asks any question like this, what is this cheese with this image? And it's going to respond like this. Similarly, you are able to add your own question and you might have some custom image. So you can teach this model what that image is. So here I've got the data. So you can add multiple questions. So I'm going to upload that here. And now it's uploading. Now it's ready. Validation none. I'm not giving anything. Batch size, I'm going to give one and epoch one just to make this tutorial quicker. And that's it. I'm going to create. This will automatically create the fine tuning. And you can see the fine tuning process happening here. Number of epochs, batch size. Next, prompt caching. So what is prompt caching? So when you ingest a large amount of data and ask one small question, that will cost a lot when you do multiple calls. But rather than always uploading the large amount of data, if we could cache that data and ask questions based on the cached data, that's going to cost you less. That is prompt caching. So here you can see offering automatic discounts on inputs that the model has recently seen. So this will make a huge cost saving when making edits to a code base or having a long multi-turn conversation with the chatbot. This will reduce cost and latency by reusing the input tokens. Developers can get 50% discount with faster prompt processing times. And the pricing when you see, compared to the uncatched input tokens, these are half the price and it's going to be faster. The output tokens cost is going to remain the same. In the API response, you are able to get the information about the cached content. Finally, model distillation. Fine tune a cost effective model with the outputs of a large frontier model all in OpenAI platform. What does this mean? Imagine you have a small model, GPT-40 mini. That is very cheap to use compared to GPT-40, the large model. You can make the larger model, teach the smaller model for a specific topic. By doing so, the quality and accuracy of the smaller model will increase with low cost. That's what's happening here in model distillation. So model distillation involves fine-tuning smaller models, cost-effective models, using outputs from the more capable models, allowing them to match the performance of advanced models on specific tasks at a much lower cost. So model distillation 
include stored completions, which means all the generated responses can be stored on the interface. Then you can use evaluation where the developers can evaluate the question and answers generated by the model. And finally, fine tune the model with the stored completion and evaluation data. That is a data set. So literally you are collecting a data set in the user interface. Let's say I'm going to make an API call with GPT-4.0 model using TypeScript. I'm just going to type npm start and it's going to run the question. That is, how can I hide the doc on my Mac? And the system message is, you are a corporate IT support expert. And based on that, here I got the response. You can see the same information available here. So now I can evaluate by clicking the evaluate at the top. So everything in one interface. Now it's loading and it loaded the JSONL data. You can also generate response if required. Then after this, I'm going to add testing criteria, add sentiment, neutral. So the response from this conversation need to be neutral. So the sentiment of the output, and I'm going to grade that using GPT-40. Then click add. This is evaluation. And I can even run the evaluation for free if I allow to share my information with OpenAI. But if you don't want to share with OpenAI, you might need to pay for it. So after this, I'm just going to run and the evaluation is starting, sentiment classification. By the way, there are different types of criteria which you want to try. So if I go add on criteria, you can validate JSON. Imagine you are training the model to generate XML data or JSON data. Then you can validate those responses. You can check for factuality, semantic similarity, contains a string, matches schema, text quality, and you can even add custom prompt. So with all these factors, you are able to evaluate the response. So the evaluation succeeded. So I'm going to open it and you can see the score. Pass, fail, pass, pass. So, so 78% is the pass. So now I can use this data set to train the model. So the data set which we have just created is here and here's the file ID. So going to fine tuning, creating a new fine tuning, base model GPT-40 mini, select existing and I'm providing the file ID. Then same as before, I'm going to provide the batch size, number of epochs, and create. So after creating that, it's going to fine tune with the data which we provided. So that is the process of model distillation, which involves storing the chat completions, evaluation, and fine tuning. This is going to be super exciting. Considering you are really interested in implementing this OpenAI features and API in your application, I've already created another video, which I will link here, which clearly explains you how to use OpenAI API in simple terms. So make sure you watch that. Thanks for watching.